Hello and welcome to this, the very first HarperCollins Presents, uh, where we, the writers, get to talk to you, the readers, about everything to do with books and the creative process. I'm Simon Toyne and this, the very first HarperCollins Presents, is about Brick Crime, which is a brand new literary online festival, uh, which didn't even exist a couple of months ago. Uh, and to talk about that, and probably anything else that comes into our mind, I have... Martin Waits, author of nine crime novels under his own name, eight under the name Tanya Carver, and one horror novel, The Woman in Black, Angel of Death. He has been nominated for the Crime Writers Association Ian Fleming Steel Dagger, The Dagger in the Library, and The Short Story Dagger, and has, by his own admission, because I read it on his website, won precisely none of them. <laughs> um, next to him, we have C.L. Taylor, multi-award winning, not to rub it in, <laughs> author of two romantic comedies and two psychological thrillers. Uh, the first of which, The Accident, was one of the best-selling debuts of 2014, and the follow-up, The Lie, was a top five Sunday Times bestseller and topped pretty much every single ebook chart going. On the end here we have Alex Marwood, former journalist and occasional TV reviewer for The Independent, which makes me slightly worried because I used to work in television, so she's probably seen some of my work. Um, <laughs> uh, she's also author of six novels. Her first crime book, The Wicked Girls, uh, was one of Stephen King's top ten books of the year in 2013. Uh, it was also shortlisted for an ITW award, uh, and it won the Edgar, which is the, the, the Oscars, pretty much, of uh, American crime writing. And finally, we have Helen Smith, uh, described by Booklist as gin and tonic funny. So, you know, no pressure to perform here. Um, she is novelist, children's author, playwright, poet, Amazon bestseller, and most recently, online literary festival organiser. For it is she who is the brains and the driving force behind Brick Crime. So, welcome everybody. And Helen, tell us exactly what is Brick Crime and how did it come about? It's um, a free online literary festival. It's actually um, a free online crime fiction festival uh, involving 41 authors. And we, were, um, we, we all know each other from um, crime fiction festivals. They're great fun to go to. Mm. We all go to them I in the UK and the US. You're going to one in Sweden soon, aren't you? Yep. It's a lot of fun. You, you, you meet readers. You hang out with your publisher. Um, you hang out with other authors. It's an opportunity for authors to connect directly with readers around the world. What we do on the page, obviously, is talk direct to readers. Um, and so not all readers and not all authors want to continue that conversation beyond mm. the page, obviously, but some do. And this is, this is a way of doing it. So, for example, Martin's not um, involved in uh, Brit Crime. He is now. He is now. now. He is well, yeah. and it's not with wearing a lovely shirt. He's Martin representing like, the snoozers kind of like, and losers. He's, yeah. like, <laughs> he's like the first person you would invite. You're, you're, at all the, you're at all the crime fiction parties. He's like the first person on your list, but because it yeah. wasn't Im an invitation. So you make me sound like Sunita. Oh, yeah, no, you are, my darling. It's, 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 your, it's your singing <laughs> and your dancing, which oh, I yeah. love so much. Um, and so, your banana skin tops. Yeah. But as I said, in the intro, I mean, you've written what 18 books now, yeah, and so you've mm. sort of you, you have seen this landscape change. I mean, you know, so is it sort of are you kind of embracing these new kind of things that sort of like uh, you know, but yeah, it? certainly in, in terms of um, things that are author led and, and social media as well. Um, it's uh, it's an, an important part of the actor's the actor, the writer's job now, you know, that writer's. you have to writer's job, yes, so, yeah. previous <laughs> because, career. Previous yeah. career as an actor, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. But I mean, but actually, to to a large extent, there's there's a, still a sense of that because what you have to do as a writer is create your your online persona, mm. you know, and that persona has to reflect your own work as well and your interaction with other people. So it, it's funny that I slipped and said actor there because I mean, mm. I think that that's still quite a quite a part of it. But I mean, I, it has changed an awful lot, you know. In in I mean, I've I've been published nearly twenty years now. And the switch from being publisher-led, like you said, now to being author-led, where, where authors mm. will get together and will do events like this one, you mm. know, is, is kind of um, a relatively recent phenomenon. And also, you know, because it's online, it's such a lot easier. Yeah. Whereas, you know, you, if you try to do something like this 15, 10 years ago, you know, you would need a space to do it in. You would need yes. a whole infrastructure behind you. You'd to, have to start to a be year ahead just mm -hmm. to book the spaces. Yeah. So, and it, then so the, it wouldn't the, happen. Yeah. Exactly, it wouldn't happen. And, and certainly not if authors were doing it. Yeah, yeah, exactly. But you're coming into this pretty, you're, you're sort of like me. We've got four books. So yeah, we're the newbies yeah. here, pretty Bit much. And it's like, and so this is sort of the, because when I came in, it's fun because I come from TV background. 
Um, and so when I came into this, it was sort of a lot of, I see a lot of the skills mm. that are now required to be a sort of 360 degree author, not just writing the books, mm. Mm. Um, as, as actually sort of being quite useful in the same way as you, you talk about mm. being an actor and everything. And what's, do you find this, because you don't have a background in any kind of media, coming into it, is it I, sort of like you thought, I, you just hand the book in and then? No, I, I, I started off blogging. I had, I, back in the days where everybody had a blog and there was like a lovely blog community and I kind of started off there um, posting, oh I've, I've just written a short story, I'm going to send it to a magazine or I'm working mm. on a novel, this is how many words I am. And there was like a community of us then that were all trying to get published. So we kind of supported each other and, and I even blogged about, you know, when my agent took me on and I had like, you know, for, for then, hundreds of comments from people mm. saying congratulations because it was this unpublished author community all yeah. cheering on. And that was back, I think I started that back in 2006. And I've kind of retired that blog now. But it was like you said about which self you're putting forward because mm -hmm. that was like my chiclet self. And then I, I started my C.L. Taylor author blog and I was like, I have to be my crime self now. And then I just thought, I just be myself. And, and that's what I've just continued to do. So I've yeah. always found the prospect of writing a blog absolutely terrifying. I've never tried doing it. I find social media incredibly easy and the sort of microblogging you can do on Facebook is fabulous and really fun. But the, the idea of, of, it's extraordinary, you know, you're a novelist, you write for other people to read, you know, as your job. But the idea that anybody would want to read my blog is completely beyond me. But also, I, don't you um, find it that, like, because after a day of writing, making stuff up, the yeah, last thing, the last thing you want to do is, is to more do words. more of it. Because it feels yeah. like homework. Yeah, I yeah that's exactly. I mean, I, I used to be part of an online blog and I'd always leave it till the Sunday to do yeah. with it. And, it and it became like, like the a Sunday chore. night thing and it it's was like yeah. you know getting your essay done to hand yeah. in on a Monday yeah, morning yeah. you know and I was just yeah. I think there are there are few I mean there are still there's, there's review blogs and there's but mm. that sort of just blogging like for a, the sake like a, of it. Yes yeah. I just don't think people do that anymore that's not how yeah. people find them I mean you can't subscribe so easily um, I just think that people will find uh, will interact so much more quickly on Twitter um, uh, and uh, you, you know you're brilliant yes, on Facebook. Easier, you're just, it? you're just the funny. Yeah, it's, the whole, it's, the, it's the interactivity and the fact that you know if somebody makes a comment, you can immediately comment back, and you can actually have a conversation. The danger of Twitter, of course, though, as we saw recently with the did you see the Ask E L James hashtag <gasps> thing? Yeah. That's yes. just, which is like you can you know it's all it can it can go like this was a thing she did I think which she did in in conjunction with Twitter which was um, where she just, you know, you can ask her questions and it kind of went slightly wrong. Here's some of the uh, responses. Is, is the message of your books that abusive relationships are great as long as the abuser is rich and good looking? Probably not what she was, the uh, kind of question she was looking for. Another one which is, which do you hate more, women or the English language? Which <laughs> <laughs> is quite good, but harsh. Um, is there a safe word we can use to get you to stop writing such dribble? Aww. This is not what I think, I think she was, was hoping one for. Which was, uh, have you ever thought of writing from the perspective of a writer? That's a good, yes, yes. Or, or Stephanie Mayer was another one, from the perspective of Stephanie Mayer. So it's not exactly, I think, what she had in mind when she set that little thing up. No. Have, you, have you ever had something, you know, done something, backfire, any kind of self-publicity thing? You know, if, if, um, if it's in terms of, of bad publicity, you know, I mean, it's again, it's, it's physical things, which is what makes this so appealing. Um, you know, a publicist did book me into a library to do an event and the library had been flooded. Oh. Um, was that with Billingham? I think he tells that story as well. Does he? Because it was you and no, him. No, it was me. It wasn't oh, you and me. Yeah. 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 So yeah. so yeah. yeah. He stole yeah. my yeah. story. So long as he doesn't have that case. So long as he doesn't have that I did a one in Borders that was similar. Yeah. Back up in Gateshead, which is you know Newcastle, where I'm from. And you know, and I was sitting in the store, smiling at people, trying to catch mm. their eye while they were trying to avoid looking at me. Yeah. And um, I think one of the one of the booksellers, you know, as I walked past, somebody looked over, interested at me sitting at the table there, and one of the booksellers sellers shouted over, "Oh, it's he's he's a local author. The book's set here." And the guy just looked and said, "Doesn't mean it's any good," and walked <laughs> off. You know. So <laughs> You know the trick with the with the with the long lines for Laura Lippmann, which yeah. are, which are here. What you do is you get somebody to go over there and take a picture from this perspective. Nice. So it's, it's, all about, it's all about the context. As if the line mm. is yeah. for you. Uh, yeah. It's on Twitter, Instagram, or Facebook. It's true. <laughs> it's just yeah. true. It's but that whole thing that kind of raises the question actually about yeah. names, which is very yeah. interesting mm. because you you have uh, you wrote under your own name. Yeah. Um, Serena Mackesy. Serena Mackesy, yeah. and now you are writing under, under a Coward. new name. Yeah. Uh, you write under your own name. I believe. I know. And and I know. Yeah, and Same it, as me. It's just yeah. no imagination. <laughs> <laughs> 
you you went Cali Town. Now you're going a little bit more exotic. Yeah. In the yeah. presumably the I might be a man, so don't be put off by Lady Vine. I think that Brooke does deal, help, and the dark covers. Which is what J.K. Yeah. Rowling did as well. Yes, yeah. yeah. Mm. Good um, model. And and completely the other end of the spectrum here, we have Martin Waits, who is also Tanya Carver. Become a woman. Indeed, I am. Yeah. So yeah. what's the? I mean, you're probably the obvious one to ask this. It's like what's the deal? What's the deal with that? How did I become a woman? How did you become a woman? <laughs> yeah. um, yes. And then, like, when you do signings, do you? Dress appropriately. No, I mean it was it was really it was kind of started off as a bet between myself and and the publisher. Where's he this said, going? We wonder. No, no, he, <laughs> he, what kind of bet? he was looking for um, uh, professionally a high concept female thriller writer, like a, a British version of Tess Gerritsen. What? And said, or did you know? Karen did Slaughter. you know one? And yeah, it was kind <laughs> you of, went, I've got this we were having, yeah, yeah. We were having uh, coffee one day, and he, and he said this, and I, and I said. Because again, this is the acting training. Because you know, they always tell you as an actor, always say you can do whatever you're asked to do. Because <laughs> right you can always yes. learn to do yeah. it. Exactly. Yeah. You know. So I said that. I said, "Oh, I can do that." I said, "No, you can't." I said, "No, I can." <laughs> he said, "So basically, it became a, a kind of a kind of task for me to see if I could write in that style as you know a high concept female thriller writer." And since I'm currently doing the eighth novel, I, I guess yes, I can. How but do you, like the CRECC. How do you approach CR it differently for for a, a female thriller writer as opposed to the ones that you write? Wow. Do, you, do you get into like a mind, female mindset? Or yeah, or I get into a Tanya Carver mindset now. I just seem to know, you know, I'll write something and I'll think that's that's a Martin. Ah. That's that's not Tanya. That's a Martin. I'll I'll keep that for the next Martin. I'll take that out, you know, and I'll. And try and start again. Or you work from a different angle because the style of writing changes as well. Gosh. Um, and it's it's not not in a kind of feminine way or a female mm. way or, or a male way, but it's just, just a because. Different personality. But yeah, you know, and I know that that you know this this is the kind of list of things that I'm expected to do as as Martin, um, and and a certain way of writing. And a certain way of writing as Tanya, and it's mm. it's become like that. Your acting must have helped with that. I, I think imagine. it did, you know, and it it is becoming like a different kind of persona, you know, that yeah. you would write in that kind of persona, and it just it you know once I get into that mindset, then I know which book I'm working on. Yeah. So, so then, do you blog and tweet as Tanya? As well? No, no, I don't. Go that I, far. I only ever do that. You as said Martin. about your blog, yeah. you, you kind mm. of struggled because you thought I'm a different person yeah, now, and yeah. then actually you came back to it. Mm. So you do the same. You're just you, and yeah, it's, yeah, it's just it's better, which is isn't it? it's kind of strange, really, because you know if, if somebody goes on Twitter and says I love the new Tanya Carver novel, I'll say, well, thank you very much. Yeah. Mm. I, I said, my God, you. stalker, who are you? You know, when we say if you write under CL, yeah, yeah, I mean that the idea and Alex is a kind of gender a neutral name as well. As neutral as I could possibly get mm. it, yeah. And I mean, I remember when the, the first Tanya came out, I was standing, it was Book of the Week in WH Smith's, The Surrogate, and I was standing in Smith's watching people that had, you know, the big kind of cardboard mm. dumpster at the front and just standing beside it watching people just come in to get a paper and, and look, pick it up, look at it and take it to the till yeah. and thinking, I can't say a word. Yes. Yeah. You know, yes. and I can't say, and then, but would it matter if, you know, they, they were knew, buying a book yeah. that they that was by a woman, or they thought was by yeah, a woman yeah. that was actually by a man. Would that make a difference? Well, and I've certainly had I've I've had some quite enraged um, enraged Amazon reviews from people who found out that I was a, I was a woman. Or like, <laughs> I like you found <laughs> I <I've> was being deceived. <laughs> like, you, like you deliberately but, hoodwinked. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. You know, they were really angry. I, I I I got one that was so angry. It was called um, it was entitled a British book by a woman writer. Um, <laughs> so, and, and and he was just he was all so all angry. He didn't like books because you know they but women books by women because they have too many words on the page well uh, it is a, i mean it is an issue and he, uh, yeah. Yeah. martin and i were talking it, it, it about is, it earlier it's a big problem you know but it's really um, interesting because like then so you've done the sort of androgynous thing you've yeah. done the kind of initial thing mm. and then you but then you've just totally gone like because I've of that very specific thing yeah but yeah. and like when you talk about kind of the sort of writing in a tanya kind of uh mindset is that i mean does that that sounds very much like the writing process anyway when you're thinking about a character and you're mm. writing different things I mean how do your books all come together I, I had to um, for this book I struggled to get the voice of the main character um, when I started because when I when I wrote the accident the voice of the main character came into my head when I was mm. food shopping she said literally the first two sentences to me right. and I repeated them all the way home until I could write them down and then I just mm. kept writing with with the, with with the lie it was slightly different because I had a lot of characters and I had to get to know mm. them 
But this book, I was like, I need to get the voice right before I start, because it's so important, because it's, mm. it's about a, a mother whose son has disappeared. And so I wrote a letter from the mother to her, her disappeared son, and that helped me get the voice. I mean, I'm sure I'll chuck the letter once I've finished the first draft, but it helped engage mm. me and get inside her head and, mm. and hear who she is and what makes her angry and all that mm. sort of thing. That thing of tone is really important, isn't it? When it really works, it feels like I'm actually just writing down something that's happened. Mm. Yeah. Mm. But in order to get to that stage is painful because yeah. for the yeah. longest time you're going, this didn't happen, this didn't yeah. happen, making yeah. stuff up, this yeah. is rubbish, mm -hmm. yeah. and whatever. And so I, when I was writing my first book, Sanctus, I became slightly obsessive about finding out writing processes of other writers. And of course, all I did is succeed in, in totally confusing myself because yeah, everybody does yeah. it differently. Yeah. 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 You know, some so people, you're not a plotter ahead either then? No, no, I do. I plot quite plot. detail, right. except the new okay. one I didn't. I tried not to, and I right. ended up with like a word cloud of yeah. first draft. But yeah. didn't you even invent a whole city where you didn't Yeah, no, I did. With my, no, I know. Like, yeah. yeah, I did, exactly. And that's the thing. So I had to do... Well, I did. I, I no, very sensitive. I quit my job in television yeah. and gave myself six months, because like you, I knew mm. I had the discipline to sit down and write something. Mm. Whether it was any good was totally and question. utterly sort yeah. of up for grabs. Yeah. Um, and I thought very cleverly, I'll just do that thing of writing what you know and stick to something very close to your own experience that you don't need to research and all that kind of mm. stuff. Um, but then I had this idea, which was just clearly the best idea, which required me to build a whole city because no city fitted the story. Yeah, so yeah. I had to kind of make one in South e in Anatolia in southeastern Turkey in the Taurus Mountains. And then yeah. like the you know when you when people review it the, you know one of the best things they say is oh we googled it to try and go there on holiday. No. And Fantastic. they really think so you've done it. Yeah. Yeah. You should sell tours there. But then my yeah. new I got a new one and I thought I'm going to set it in Arizona. Yeah. I'm going to go there. It will be yeah. easy. It's modern. It's fine. And then of course the story develops and nowhere really quite fits it. So yeah. I ended up making You're up a whole town in Arizona as well. Yeah. So it's obviously yeah. my thing. No, I'm afraid I buy make up make up locations all the time it's partly just that thing of um but they're characters the, the, the as well people, aren't they? you know yeah uh, yeah they're, absolutely and they're, and they, they're very important to the actual the whole the whole feel of the book is the place where it's at absolutely mm. but that's but that's the trouble because when you do set it somewhere you know yeah. that, that people know they will comment yeah. you will get those amazon reviews i yeah. think you'll find i, I yeah. did oh, yeah. i did have that that there's no ofsted in wales that was the thing about being a writer is i mean i came from the similar background mm. to you in the sense of it's like quite noisy and collegiate yeah. and yeah. sort of and, and pressure deadlines and then I mean you do have pressure with a book because you have a deadline and, yeah. and it's a big undertaking mm. but the thing that gets me the most is the loneliness of it actually and so things like you know <laughs> Twitter and everything you Facebook all you know, exactly I know but then you do it too much <laughs> yeah. Yeah. you know you like the song yeah, 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 you're a proper writer I just need to build up my energy by spending loads of time on my own so then would you agree you saw that the recent YouGov thing which said you know what was the most desirable jobs and author came top like and so we would you agree with that I think all the introverts were like yes hello for months on your own. Yeah, I still get dressed. I don't Never think that it was the actual job. Unless you want one, yeah, you know, I, you know, <laughs> and, and, you know, wondering which t-shirt and yeah. which unmatching pajama trousers <laughs> yeah. you're going to wear that yeah. day. Oh, I was saying I'd, I would like to have a uniform. We oh, no, you want your earlier, uniform. Yeah, yeah, that's just yeah. a bit weird, though. <laughs> yeah, it's like, no. yeah. yeah, Well, I think when I was talking about an admiral's hat, then it gets. Yeah, that's when it got really weird. Yeah, yeah. But I think writers, the writer uniform would basically be stained pajamas. It would be pajamas, wouldn't it? And dressing gown, and and then I was trying. I was trying to pretend that I might be a nurse who works nights when because the neighbours always do that like oh you know still not dressed there and I'm like you know I, rather oh, than no. saying oh I'm sorry I'm too lazy to get <laughs> yeah, exactly. I will be I'm a writer. Do, you, writer. do you dress up for this as well? Or no, I, but just you know you just I haven't got you know I'm I, I'm in my dressing and I will obviously get dressed at some point. But no, I mean I think you know when you're saying about the YouGov poll, you know that's the most desirable job to be a writer. I think that what a lot of people think is it's it's the myth of it. Yeah. Mm. It's you know that that kind of myth is just you and, and a lamp and yeah. your keyboard and whiskey a light yeah. and beautifully lit. lit. Yeah, yeah. beautifully yeah. lit and, you know and, yes. and you can put you know your soul your down beautiful and, yeah. Words. you know and it's flowing just flo yes your soul. and you create and <laughs> There are no other concerns and you're yeah. just going to finish that up and you're just going to sell for millions and yes. you can stand on cliffs looking pensive and yes. people will come and do uh, interviews with you, my life yeah. in art. You've really fleshed this out. Yeah. 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 You've spent a lot of time. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, obviously, you know, we, we all have that life. 
Yeah, yes. so we do. We're, we're very do. fortunate. We're very fortunate. Yeah. It's, yeah. A, it's a bit more like that with the first book, Before You've Got Your Deal, where yeah. you are yes. just doing it for the love of it. The love of it, yes. Just, you know, you, you're at work and you look for, well, I did, I looked yeah. forward to going home that so I time. could start writing yeah. my novel again. Do you wish you could go back and tell your unpublished self to relax, <gasps> enjoy it a bit more? Because yes. I do. So, yes. I yes. totally yes. just yeah. say, look, you know, then you'll get a contract, then you'll have deadlines, yeah. then it's a job, and then mm. there's the pressure. Yeah. Especially if the first one you're lucky and it does well, then you've got this big shadow over you and, you know, it's just yeah. enjoy but I think it. also, yeah. though, that, you know, I mean, uh, there was an awful lot of misery involved in not being a published writer, though, and I think that one um, one needs to remember that, and it would be really nice to be able to go back to myself ten years ago, for instance, and just say, "It'll be okay. You'll win an Edgar, you know." Yeah. Mm. Um, Stephen King will like your book. Yeah. <laughs> you know. and he did. <laughs> You can just, you can just like, you know, you can just stay in bed yeah, now. Forever. Exactly, you I don't, don't have never to need to leave bed again, you know. <laughs> yeah, but it is those things, isn't it? I think, yeah. you know, those little moments. I mean, the other thing is like, yeah. which is again a kind of part of the myth, I think, with the unpublished author, is the whole notion of Hollywood coming calling. Have you had um, interest? Yeah, well, my second rom com was made into an oh, of course, independent yeah, yeah. film um, by an independent company. And uh, I didn't get a penny, and I haven't got a penny, uh, but they were just really excited about it. It was, it was set in um, an independent cinema in Brighton, and one of the co-owners of the production company worked there. She got given the book for Christmas. Give us the name of the book. Kay. Home for Christmas. <laughs> and, uh, and, and she fell in love with it and got in touch with my agent and said, I need to make it. And I was just so keen to see my characters come to life. I think mm. all authors yeah. dream of yeah. that, yeah. just seeing mm. them come to life and, and seeing your work. Was it weird or was it great? It was It was weird and surreal and thrilling. I mm. mean, you know, I had uh, Carl Davis, who was um, Robert Sugden in Emmerdale. Mm. He's now been in Game of Thrones and he was in Happy Valley as Sarah Lancashire's mm. son and he's, he's oh, done right, loads of yeah. stuff. And April Pearson, who was in Skins. and just to see them interacting with him leaning over the, the counter at the cinema for their first meet, you know, the cute meet and all of that. And it was just, oh, it was mm. amazing. I, yeah. I, honestly, if anybody could oh, get a chance, yeah. when you get no money at all, mm. just to see that is yeah. incredible. No, I, I did it a couple of weeks ago. There's um, a story in mine that's been sold. I was filming up in Northumberland and, you know, the, the film crew said, oh, do you want to come up and see it being filmed? So, cool. you know, so I did, you know, and I, and... <laughs> because in the in the story that the the lead character is actually unnamed, um, but it's a first person narrative, so they'd called him rather cheekily, I thought, Martin. Oh, oh, <laughs> and, <laughs> and then they'd got uh, do you know Adam Garcia? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, who's in Coyote Ugly Ooh. to oh, play. Yeah, him. Yeah, yeah. 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 I thought, yeah, that'll do. Um, that's all right. Yeah. <laughs> He's that's playing me in the film. Martin. Yeah, that's, that's oh, good. That's all right. He's just yeah. called Martin. He's right? just called yeah, Martin. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> but again, you know, it was it was so strange yeah. to to watch. And to you know, and I thought after a while, does the director actually want me here? Because what do you think of that? Hasn't he got that right? And I said, Yeah. No. What? No. No. He has. No. That's really <laughs> good. Yeah, there, was really a, there was a hesitation. <laughs> yeah. I said, yeah so, but it was. They don't want writers on set. You know. And after yeah. a while, I thought, you know, they, they're just being kind. I better go home. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Best for everyone. It, I oh, loved it, so, yeah. yeah. No, I really so. loved it. Did you have anything to do with the filming of the, the major motion picture? Of, the major, uh, no, I had nothing. I mean, I... Um, Woman in Black, I mean, Angel was, of Death, I Angel believe. Angel of Death, yes. yes. I mean, that was, that was a different thing because I was... That must have been tough because that's like, I mean, big, huge book and then very successful film. The, the big thrill for me was, I mean, you know, it was to do an official sequel to The Woman in Black, um, which, you know, I, I never stopped to think about, you know, when I was first asked to do it, I said, yes. So mm. would you like to think mm. about this? No, 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 no. that sounds great. I don't want to do it. Yeah. yeah, that's that's great. No. I've been Tanya, I can be Susan. Why well, exactly. Yeah. You know, yeah. Why yeah. 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 So that, How about you? Have you gone to film? Yeah, I got one screenplay very nearly made. Um, but, the, you know, the thing with making a film, a small independent British film, is like you need about a million bits of money. And yeah, as soon as yeah, one yeah. falls away, everything yeah. falls away. So that's what happened, and it was it taken about four years and of like just pushing it uphill. I always wanted yeah, to write yeah. big blockbuster stuff. I didn't yeah. really want to write the stuff that I was writing yeah. for yeah. Uh, scripts anyway. So uh, I, when I quit my job to try and write a book, I thought I'm going to do the big thing. I'm going to do the big blockbustery thing. Then when I had the idea, after getting rid of the small man story, uh, in ex <laughs> ordinary man extraordinary circumstances thing, yeah. um, and I thought I just might as well go for it, I might as well do yeah. it, if I was going to fail I might as well go for it, so I went for that and I thought, oh no, and actually everyone read it and said oh this is really cinematic, this is yeah. really, you know, sanctus yeah. cinematic, really cinematic, 
a bit too close to Dan Brown. So, mm, so I had lots of nice meetings, but it never came to anything. Um, and they were always the Dan Brown thing. It's like, mm. well, it's a bit too close to Dan Brown. We've yeah. got Dan Brown, and mm. you know, whatever. And you haven't sold as many as Dan Brown. I was like, who has? Not yet. Uh, <laughs> and, um, but then, interestingly, the new one, Solomon Creed, which isn't out yet, um, there is a deal. Oh, great. A very exciting deal, which I can't talk about. Oh, oh That's great. Oh, yeah, the book's Yay. behind Cali. Yeah, so there is yeah. a yeah. look. So there, there is a yeah. 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 so It looks like a movie yes. already, doesn't it? There it does. Yeah. 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 yeah, no, it's good. Gorgeous. Yeah. 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 It's yeah. 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 And oh, look, it's over there next to my books as well. Oh, there you are. Do you know? <laughs> it's just above my new tiny car. Well, I'm just oh, next to yours, Cali, as well. Brilliant to Ray. Isn't it lovely when that happens? Isn't it? It's all taken a moment to admire all of our books. But there we go. Uh, but that's been, I think that's, I think we're out of time. I, uh, oh, sadly, wow. time to fly really when you're fast. having fun. Um, fun. It's been great. Um, thank you for watching. Uh, for any information on all of the authors uh, who've taken part today, uh, all of their links to their websites will be underneath this clip, as will a link to Brit Crime, uh, where all of the events are archived, so you can catch up with any of those. Uh, and also, please subscribe to this, because then there's going to be loads more stuff coming, different authors much to talk about uh, and you can even if you want um, put in the comments questions you'd like asked or uh, topics you'd like discussed. This has been HarperCollins Presents, I've been Simon Toyne, thank you for watching. Mm -hmm.